so You're listening to a Mamma Mia podcast. Mamma Mia acknowledges the traditional owners of land and waters that this podcast is recorded on. Hey out louders, it's Mia. The news out of Gaza this week, as I'm sure you've seen, has been absolutely devastating. And we will be talking about it again on Wednesday's show. Holly, Jesse, and I, all of us here at Mamma Mia, have been grappling with the images and footage and reporting that is emerging, as have, of course, so many of you alongside those around the world. The past seven months have been truly horrifying. And as ever, our focus remains firmly on the lives of women and children who are affected. The death toll of civilians in this war is abhorrent, and we wish fervently for an end to this war. We have deep compassion for every single person who is affected by it. Our twice daily news podcast, The Quickie, has been covering this story ongoing as it has unfolded since last year, helmed by the brilliant journalist Claire Murphy, who many of you know from her guest spots on Out Loud. And every morning, in case you're not familiar with this show, The Quickie brings you the top news headlines and also a deep dive into one of the topics in the news. And later this week, they will be doing another in-depth episode about Rafa. And every evening, The Quickie also publishes a second episode with more news headlines, and that's what you're about to hear from today. Please follow The Quickie if you want to hear future episodes, the news headlines and the deep dive morning episodes, and we will put a link in the show notes to our recent news coverage. Here's Claire Murphy with today's news headlines. Thanks, Mia. Hi, I'm Claire Murphy from Mamma Mia's daily news podcast, The Quickie. Here's what's happening in the news today, Tuesday, May 28. Australia's Foreign Minister Penny Wong has joined other world leaders in condemning an Israeli airstrike in the Gaza city of Rafah that hit a displacement camp and started a fire, killing 45 civilians. Senator Wong posted on social media that Israel's strikes have had horrific and unacceptable consequences, the events of the past 24 hours underscoring that we must see a humanitarian ceasefire now so that civilians can be protected. She reiterated that Australia has been very clear that Israel must not proceed with with its operation in Rafah and called for Hamas to release the hostages still held in Gaza after being taken in the October 7 terror attack, telling the designated terror group to stop using Palestinian civilians as human shields. More than half of the 45 people killed in the airstrike are women, children and the elderly. That number predicted to rise with many suffering critical burns injuries. The mother of Charlize Mutton, whose body was found in a barrel near a river in the New South Wales Blue Mountains in 2022, has told the court she did not kill her own daughter. Callista Mutton broke down in tears when she was confronted with the accusation, telling those present that she still didn't even know exactly where the nine-year-old had been shot until that very moment. Miss Mutton was in a relationship with a 33-year-old man at the time who was himself standing trial for the schoolgirl's death. He claims he witnessed Miss Mutton shoot the girl. Italian media are reporting that the Pope used a highly derogatory word towards the LGBTQI community as he stands firm on gay people not being allowed to become priests. The Pope reportedly used the F word in relation to seminaries or priesthood colleges where he says they are already full of them. Pope Francis has been credited with leading the Roman Catholic Church into taking a more welcoming approach to the LGBTQI community, famously saying back in 2013 that if a person is gay and has goodwill, who am I to judge? Last year, he also allowed priests to bless members of same-sex couples, triggering substantial conservative backlash. The alleged use of the F word is said to have happened on May 20, when the Italian Bishops' Conference opened a four-day assembly with a non-public meeting. The members of ABBA say they still don't fully understand the reason their music lives on and is still so loved by so many. Bjorn and Benny took questions from a celebrity audience, including Joanna Lumley, Rosamund Pike and Rick Astley, ahead of Monday night's 756th performance of their show, ABBA Voyage, which has been playing for two years in London and features avatars of the four band members performing their greatest hits. Reflecting on the band's impact, Bjorn said it was very hard to grasp a emotionally, that they wrote these little songs and gave rise to where they are now, still touching millions of people. Benny says he has no idea what makes people want to listen to music that was done 50, 40 or 30 years ago, beyond saying if you said something like this would happen in 50 years' time, it would be preposterous. 
That's your evening news headlines. On Thursday's episode of The Quickie, we're looking into where Palestinian refugees are supposed to go now that the places they've been told are safe to shelter are also under fire. And who can stop this attack on Rafah if even the international courts have been unable to do so? Make sure you check out The Quickie wherever you get your podcasts.